Hi, my name is Lisa Brody, and everybody watches AccessTV.org. Peace. Welcome, viewers. This is Jonathan Small doing the Small Report, uh, July 24th, 2012, from downtown Hartford. A very nice, uh, warm summer day, again, as usual, but, you know, I'm not going to uh, complain about the weather. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's been a real busy week, uh, nationally, locally, with many different issues. Pretty much the biggest story this past week has been the crime incident in Colorado where the young man went into the movie theater and basically killed 12 people and wounded several others. And that kind of gets into my topic today uh, during the small report about the good versus the bad. Will the good ever outweigh the bad? We have violence in our society. That's the bad part of life. And we want to end it. We want to eradicate it and you want to promote the positiveness, the goodness of life. And there's a lot of good people out here in life. There's a lot of good things happening in life. In the media world, many times you hear the bad side of life, the crime, the violence, the shooting, because that draws sensation, that draws uh, attention, and many people want to get that type of information. Um, I believe the good can outweigh the bad. It's just how you go about targeting it. Uh, first of all, the bad side of life obviously is violence. But let me let people know this incident that took place isn't actually the first incident where a person went into a facility and shot multiple people. If people can remember, um, in 1984, out in California, an individual went into a restaurant. I think it was a McDonald's restaurant, but I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to look into that. And I believe the person went inside the restaurant and killed over 20 people. Um, again, I wish I would have had all of that information prepared, but everything was just happening so fast to get everything put together. But do a little uh, research, first of all, about um, drastic killings in our society. And check the year 1984 in California. And it was a drastic incident where a person went into a restaurant and just wounded several people, killed actually several people, that was doing nothing more than eating food. Um, technology, media-wise, CNN was around in 1984, but the way we have the internet and other forms of technology, it's, this is gonna obviously draw a lot of attention, especially after 9-11. Uh, locally here in Connecticut, we've had several drastic incidents of crime and violence. Uh, it's probably common throughout our whole country. Uh, the most disturbing incident took place down in Bridgeport, Connecticut, which is in the southwest section of our state, where basically they had three homicides within a 24-hour period. Uh, one shop owner or store owner was killed, I guess, leaving his business, robbed. He refused to give up the money. He was killed. A 15-year-old girl was killed sitting on the front porch after a Sweet 16 birthday party. And another individual was shot and killed yesterday in the daytime in Bridgeport. I don't have all the exact uh, circumstances, but basically three homicides. The mayor, the police of chief, the police officials down in Bridgeport is all trying to work towards something. They had a big press conference uh, yesterday trying to look into what's going on. Because now it's not just the criminals and the people that's directly involved in crime that's getting killed. You find now people who have nothing to do with crime finding themselves victims and even being killed. Locally here, we're in Hartford, we had a homicide over the weekend. An individual was shot uh, on Cabot Street. Basically, he fell out of the third floor window, um, fell to the ground. He was laid on the ground for several hours. Many people on the street witnessed this person 
and this is just, this is the real ugly side and bad side of life. And I don't know the magic solution to end violence, but I know it's something that we got to believe in our heart that one day we can definitely reduce till it gets to a point where it's not a major problem. But right now it is a major problem. The good part of life is there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things many times that's not being noticed, it's not being spotlighted. We have some great opportunities that's on the verge of happening on a national scale. Many people who are familiar with NBC Sports Network, they're going to be moving their divisions at some point towards the end of the year or the beginning of next year into Connecticut down in the southwestern section of Stanford. I just read today in the Hartford Current here locally here in Hartford, we're going to have a golf network um, channel that's going to be starting the building stage of the studio down in Constitution Plaza, where we used to have uh, WFSB located at before they moved to uh, Rocky Hill. And this owner, uh, the founder, James Bosworth, is planning to sometime next year have pretty much the studio and everything into full operation. And this is a big sign of encouragement for our local capital city here, Hartford in uh, Connecticut, because we've been losing some of our media companies um, over the past couple of years. And I think this is a starting point, just like accesstv.org is doing a tremendous job here downtown in Hartford at really moving into a new media level. It took a while for this particular company to get where it's at, but it's certainly moving and I project, I predict in the very near future, you're going to be hearing a lot more about accesstv.org. We're going to eventually be moving into a live format and a daily format. And basically that's going to happen very soon. I don't have an exact date again, but it's going to be happening on live online live a day-to-day -day format of the small report and other programs and you can just log into accesstv.org and you'll be able to tune in on a live format but the good part is many people are moving into the business world many people are moving into the workforce many people are traveling many people are learning different cultures this is the summertime of the year usually when many people do travel and basically, you learn a lot when you get a chance to see different places. I keep on reminding every now and then my executive or producer that I want to take a trip at some point down to Atlanta just to get a vibe of what that city is like, learn a little bit more about the media industry. They really seem to be growing, taking away a lot of the spotlight that used to be out in California, Hollywood, Burbank. You have uh, Black Entertainment Television that basically moved their operation down to Atlanta. You have Screen Gems, a major studio that signed a long-term lease in Atlanta. And it's a growing metropolitan area. They have a lot of growth potential and they have a lot of uh, resources, mainly Hartsfield International Airport, that's really been able to push the media industry into that particular area. And I just want to be able to go down there at one point, take a little trip, see what it's like. I've never actually even been to Atlanta. I've been to the Caribbean so many times, but never really been to Atlanta, Georgia, to really see what that city is like. And particularly with the winter time, if we have a very cold winter or snowy winter like we had two years ago, uh, that would be a good time. And if I have the time available and everything is in order to actually go down to Atlanta and just see what it's like. But I think everybody throughout our country needs to try to model where you live at, uh, where you reside at, the good part of life, because there is a lot of goodness in life out here. You just got to find that particular niche and that particular positiveness and go with it. And media is a format that we can kind of signal that media positiveness and that media growth and the good things about life that we need to be encouraging. Um, the good thing about violence, if it's anything about that you can say good about violence is we can sometimes learn from it. You know, what we can do differently today than what we didn't do in the past. Um, I believe uh, the law enforcement side really wants to do the best job that they can do. It's not an easy job to go out there and try to get 
uh, hardened criminals. Well, not so much get hardened criminals off of the street, but try to prevent hardened criminals, you know, because usually the law enforcement side, the police side, comes after a major crime has happened. Obviously, you can put more police officers on the street that would detour or prevent some of your criminals from doing crime at that particular time. But it's a combinationary effort that we got to work towards way beyond just the law enforcement side of trying to end violence. And violence is a very terrible form of, of life, but there's many forms of violence that many people don't seem to realize. You have many people going hungry every single day. Many people don't know where they're going to live at. Many people got health condition issue, uh, issues that they can't get properly treated, a lot of mental, psychiatric issues. And unfortunately, many of these issues are not being corrected and being um, prevented. And it might be passing down to your younger people even that they're dealing with psychiatric problems, mental illness problems, having family members that's been victimized towards crime. And they might be lost in trying to figure out what is the best way to look at the good side of life. And it's not an easy solution for me to tell everybody what to do, but just try to look within yourself sometime and try to find somebody that can be somebody that you can turn to and help you when you don't know exactly what you need to do or how to go about doing it. We live in a fast-paced society where everything moves just like that. Everybody got their own issues. Everybody got their own life, their own uh, families, their own communities. So there's no one way of guaranteeing that everybody's going to stop what they're doing and reach out to you and work with you for the length of time that you want. And sometimes when you get caught up into turning the problem over to social agencies and other agencies to deal with these people who can't get their life in order or have tremendous uh, issues, they don't always get the proper treatment. Look no further than Oprah Winfrey. I believe at one point, when she was um, a girl or a teenager victimized, uh, she was abused sexually by members of her own family. She lived in many different um, places. Uh, she was at the verge of being able, I think it was a Friday towards the end of the week, and she was a, supposed to be going into some type of group home, but she indicated that they, not have, they did not have enough space in a particular group home, and some family relatives took her in, and that was the turning point of her life. So sometimes, and many people out here have the potentials to be doing things a lot better, but you might not be getting steered in the proper direction. An Oprah Winfrey story could be a tremendous uh, encouragement. Many people might not feel they can do what Oprah Winfrey has done, but if you can do probably one-tenth of what she has been able to accomplish, that would be saying a lot. So I think the good side of life, I'm going to try to look into it a little bit differently than the normal way people would promote the good side of life, the positive, the keep people encouraged and motivated. It's just a matter of getting people informed and plugged into what you need to be doing. And it, there might be some people out there that's complimenting uh, committing suicide, killing somebody, killing members of their own family. Um, thinking about getting involved in crime, you know, selling drugs, just don't know where to turn. Uh, again, all I can tell you is just listen to that voice in the back of your mind. Uh, you have two voices, uh, the, the, the devil side and the godly side. And it's which side you decide to listen to and reach out to. And usually the first voice is the voice you need to listen to. The second voice, if I'm saying, stating it correctly, what I was told is that devil side that's trying to get you to do something that you shouldn't be doing. And many times people don't even want to listen to the first voice, they go with the second voice. So your mind is a real powerful tool. You know, which voice are you going to be able to operate under? The first voice or the second voice? Try the first voice. I think that voice would be your best solution. Um, my executive producer is a pastor, so he probably knows a lot more about the biblical spiritual side of which voice to, to, to actually turn to and i'll probably ask him that in the very near future but that's something that somebody told me a long time ago you have two voices in your mind and usually the second voice can get you in a lot of trouble or get you doing something wrong uh, again i hope to have more uh, at least one guest in in the very near future that can really target some real critical issues we're going to mostly be going on a 15 minute format once we get to a day-to-day live uh, program, but right now we're going to continue with a 15 uh, segment format. I hope everybody could get something. Uh, everybody out there 
that's tuning in to the small report can get something out of this particular program and possibly think differently about how you view life. We can't change what has already happened. Unfortunately, the bad side of violence, once it happens, it happens. You just got to find a way to correct it, deal with it, try to look at it differently in the very near future. So it probably won't be a problem as bad as it is right now. But I can't guarantee anything in life but death. Uh, death, what taxes, death, 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 and taxes mostly is what they usually say. Again, this is Jonathan Small doing the Small Report. I hope everybody out there can be very encouraged and have a very good day. And until the next time I see you, uh, keep the faith. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it like this.